The world is in tremendous danger. We're in danger of possibly a World War III. And we have a man who's absolutely the worst president in the history of our country. He can't put two sentences together. He's not going to be able to negotiate with Putin or Xi or Kim Jong-un, North Korea. Not going to be able to negotiate with anybody. All he knows how to do is drop bombs all over the place, meaningless bombs, except they kill a lot of people. It costs a lot of money. Every time you see a bomb, it's another million dollars. And it actually sets us back. We have peace through strength. This should not be happening. The Middle East is blowing up. It's blowing up. And a lot of people are being killed, and it's so unnecessary. So I just say that uh, in watching the Supreme Court today, I thought it was very it's a very beautiful process. I hope that democracy in this country will continue. Uh, because right now, we have a very, very tough situation with all of the radical left ideas, with the weaponization of uh, politics. They weaponize it like it's never been weaponized before. It's totally illegal, but they do it anyway. And it has to stop. Every one of the court cases that I'm involved, every single one, civil, whether it's the attorney generals or the district attorneys, you look at Fani in Georgia, they had many meetings with the White House and with the DOJ. They went there, eight-hour meetings. That was all staged. That was a phony hoax. And now you look at it, and it is a phony hoax. And hopefully that case will be dismissed in short order. It's a, it's a disgrace to this country. But they work together with the Justice Department and the White House. And I'm not supposed to do that. Every one of these cases you see comes out of the White House. It comes out of Biden. It's election interference, and it's really very sad. Uh, I thought the presentation today was a very good one. I think it was well received. I hope it was well received. You have millions of people that are out there wanting to vote, and they happen to want to vote for me or the Republican Party or whatever you want to, however you want to phrase it. But I'm the one running, and we are leading in every poll. We're leading in the uh, local polls, in the state polls, and we're leading in the swing state polls. And we're leading very big in the national polls. So it's been a very great honor. We love the country. I think the reason we have such big leads, frankly, is that they loved four years of us compared to the three years plus the three years that they've gone with Biden, where you have open borders, you have crime. Nobody's ever seen crime like this, what's happening. And now the crime is being committed, much of it by the migrants that have come in illegally to our country. Uh, I was wondering about that. I said, you know, a lot of these people come out of jails. They come out of mental institutions. They come out of places that you don't want to know about. We don't even know where they come from. We don't know who they are, where they are. They're being dumped in from mental institutions, from prisons and jails. And many terrorists are coming into our country. We're going to be paying a big price. They have to stop it. They have to close the border. By the way, the president can do it just by saying, I want the border closed. I closed the border. We had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the most unsafe border in the history of the world. There's never been a, a country with a border like this, not even a third world country. So uh, we are, again, we're going out to Nevada right now. We'll be out there. Some of you are going to be out there with us. Otherwise, your colleagues will be. And hopefully, we're going to have a big night caucus tonight. We're going to have a very big night. We expect to have a very big night. Uh, the Virgin Islands, as you know, are also very much in play today. So we'll be hearing about them sometime during the day or later on in the evening. And it's an honor to have you at Mar-a-Lago. I hope you like it. Uh, it's worth a little more than $18 million. Is another case. He just says it's worth $18 million. I said, uh, which, uh, which cabin are we talking about? <laughs> but that's the, kind of, that's the kind of justice we have when they say that to try and build up a case. That was a shame. But that gave up so much. When they said that, that gave up so much that Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million. They had it appraised for, as you know, 50 to 100 times that amount. But we have a judge that that's what he said. And he's supposed to be ruling on me. But who knows? Maybe he'll be fair. I doubt it. But maybe he'll be fair. So I want to thank everybody. And by the way, we proved that case 100 percent five times over. That case is 100 percent proven five times over. We've never seen anything like it. He just wouldn't dismiss it, no matter what. Shouldn't it be there? It should have been in the commercial division. Anyway, uh, it's an honor to have you. I look forward to having you again, and I'll probably see you out in Nevada. Thank you very much.
the Supreme Court is said to be broadly skeptical in the early reporting about the effort to try and kick you off the ballot. Having said that, though, speak to the argument, legal and otherwise, that your detractors have made leading up to the day. And it's an argument that was given voice by Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, not one. All right, I got it. I got the gist. No question. Yeah, I got the gist. President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. He doesn't say that anymore. So let me just tell you that I heard and I watched. And the one thing I'll say is they kept saying about what I said right after the insurrection. Because I think it was an insurrection caused by Nancy Pelosi. This was an insurrection, if it was an insurrection, which there were no guns, there were no anything except for the fact that they shot Ashley Babbitt. Somebody from at least four shot Ashley Babbitt. So unnecessary, so sad, so horrible. But there were no guns, there were no anything. But if you take a look at my words right after, you take a look at my speech from the Rose Garden, which was very shortly after, or you take a look at my, I'm only on truth now, but at that time we were tweeting and I was on Twitter. If you take a look at those five or six tweets, you will see very beautiful, very heartwarming statements. Go home, the police are doing their job, et cetera, et cetera. Beautiful statements. If you see my statement made in the Rose Garden, I think you have to watch that. Because today they said the words of Trump. Now, if you take a look at the words of Democrats over the last period of time, look at Schumer's statement about the Supreme Court on the steps of the Supreme Court. He sounded like a mob boss. Take a look at uh, any of them. Take a look at any. We, we put together a tape of vicious, violent statements made by Democrats. Nobody brings that up. Take a look at Maxine Waters and the vicious statements that she made. I didn't do that. I said peacefully and patriotically. The speech was called peacefully and patriotically. It's pe peacefully and patriotically. He said I said bad statement. It was the exact opposite. So I think you should take a look at the statements that I made uh, before and after, and you'll see a whole, a whole different uh, dialogue.